as uniquely American music. Jazz has grown from its roots in the South to play coast to coast. In the Sacramento, California area, hot spots to hear jazz include the Torch Club, Dante Event Center, Buddhist Church of Sacramento, Le Bistro, and the Brubeck Institute. Jazz vocalist and recording artist Vivian Lee specializes in the standards. Gershwin, Ellington, some Brubeck, Hubbard, Monk, and Gillespie thrown in. Ms. Lee has three times, 2005, 2006, and 2007, been voted one of Sacramento's top jazz groups and top local entertainer by subscribers in Sacramento's magazine, Annual Best of Sacramento Issue. She is also the 2009 Sacramento Magazine editor's pick as Best Jazz Diva. Vivian Lee won the 2007 Sammy Sacramento Area Music Award. The winning vocalist's unique style, phrasing, storytelling, and magical stage presence have been captivating audiences for the last 13 years. Now adjust your buds and enjoy the jazz highlights of three of her albums, Scarlet, Where is Love, and From Miss Lee to You. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Observations and Perspectives. This morning, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome a person that I've been watching on the stage for years and years in Sacramento, California, our own jazz diva, Ms. Vivian Lee. So, hey, Vivian, good morning. Good morning, Diane. And welcome to Calm Unity Global Internet Radio. Thank and you. I, when we first started this radio show, you were like the third name on a big list that we oh would like to interview in Sacramento, California. Thank so, you so much. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So, Vivian, when did you realize you could sing? You know, a lot of people have um, a voice they play around with in choir in high school. And, and when did it hit you that, oh my God, I think I might be able to sing? I was 37 years old. Oh my gosh. And at that particular point, had you been singing for a while or? Not really. You, you know, I, well, I'm Catholic. Mm -hmm. So for us, it wasn't like a gospel choir and stuff. It's the folk choir at mass. <laughs> I was in that for a little while. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, just singing along with the radio, didn't think I had a voice. Not at all. Not at all. And I, I was in the Air Force and I had to put the Christmas party together. So I got the people that I knew were singers and uh, I was a dancer, I, you know, I, I did a little, we did a little chorus line dancing thing for our party. And I bought all of these backup tapes for the people that were singers. And just for giggles, I got a Billie Holiday tape, backup tape that had God bless the child and good morning heartache. And so in the middle of rehearsing all of these people for the, for the Christmas party, someone said, Viv, you should, you should try. So I started playing around with those two tapes and I ended up singing, had never sung in front of people other than a member of the choir, never sung in front of people, 350 people at this Christmas oh party. And I did God bless the child and they liked it. And I'm like, what what uh, this is this is fun <laughs> and so that's how I learned that I could sing and that I could do jazz or you know that kind of music and uh played around with it for another I did this the party the next year and then I retired from the air force and then the idea just came to me. And so I started buying all those backup tapes and I picked them very carefully. Frank Sinatra, Nat King Cole, you know, just all of those, all of those songs, Gershwin and, and um, started 
just practicing with those. And I um, made a little demo and went to a place called the distillery, a little place that, that used to be on 21st and L. And I went in there and with my little demo and he hired me. So I was using backup tapes and doing just show just me. And uh, then his cousin owned the back door down in old sack. And then she hired me. And so I spent years honing my skills and honing my stage persona um, as a solo using backup tapes. Then I started meeting musicians because I was terrified of them because I thought they're gonna think I'm the dumbest cluck in the world. I don't know squat. And they were all very nice and they taught me. They and brought me in to sing for a little bit, brought me into a big band. And so that's how I just honed myself over the years in well, learning and, it, and soaking up everything that, that the instrumentalists taught me to do. You have been extremely sponge-like because you have um, picked up some marvelous techniques. And after four CDs now, is it? Um, five. I have five, five now. CDs, yes. Five CDs. And starting to sing when you were 37 years old. That is pretty amazing. So you went public and soloed at your kind of Christmas party. So how did things evolve to where they are um, today? Were you spotted by talent agents or? No, no, no. Um, the first person who spotted me was a bass player. He came in, someone told him to come into the back door came into the back door and listened to me. We sat down and talked and we formed a band together that lasted for a few years. So that was my first foray into playing with the band and, and kind of getting that kind of going. He was also in a big band, Fred Morgan's big band. He got me into that. So I'm singing with the big band. And then our group split up and I started just kind of trying to put things together on my own as far as with musicians. And I started going to jam sessions, meeting musicians, met Jimmy Robinson. He played with me for a little while, met Glenn Hare on guitar, and he started playing with me. So we, Glenn and I put, you know, we put a band together and it was the Vivian Lee uh, sextet because there were six of us. And so I did that for a few years and we were kind of a little big band and uh, playing for dancers and stuff. And then as I was evolving, Glenn started aiming me towards being more jazz than just being a swing band. And so that's when I started really listening to in jazz instrumental groups to learn um, to improvise the melodies and not just sing them straight and to just kind of, you know, do that. And all along the way, LeGrand Rogers, he advised me on some things. Jimmy Robinson advised me on some things. Just all along the way, musicians have just told me little things. Um, Jeff Clayton, who was a very, very good friend, he passed away last year. He taught me to take a song, every song that I do, and just change a note, change this, change this phrasing in little spots along the song to really shape it into my own. So all these years, 25 years, I've just been soaking up and learning from the musicians that I've played with, as well as learning from listening to jazz on Pandora, on the radio, just listening to how the horns improvise and, and, and swing with the band and stuff. And so I've learned that over the years, how to just make myself a part of the band, not just the girl singer singing out front. Well, it, it has worked, Vivian, because it's been a, a wonderful experience for us in Sacramento. You know, there's something about jazz. I've been interested in jazz for maybe the last 30 or 40 years. 
but there's something about jazz that allows me to do other things and always have it in the background going because it doesn't interfere with thoughts. What is it about jazz that like enhances an experience but doesn't interfere or, or overtake the experience? There's something wonderful about jazz that just kind of like- It's, I, 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 I kind of hate to use this word, calming. Yes. When you think of calming, you think of boring, but it's not. Um, you 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 hear the music, you hear the swing, you you, and your your head is bopping, but you're still you're still doing what you have to do. Uh, so so it's not boring, but it just sort of settles you. I mean, I, my brain is always going 25,000 miles an hour mm -hmm. all the time. And jazz just sort of brings me back into this place. Now, for other people who are not jazz fans, it's boring. I, you know, a, a lot of people know that in my work life, I am and was an operating room technician. So working in the OR. And so for a little while in a room, they will let me put on jazz. <laughs> they will let me put on jazz. And I'm real careful about pushing what I love to listen to on other people, but they will let me listen to it for a little while when we're doing a surgery. And then after, oh, I don't know, 45 minutes, an hour, the doc will go, okay, all right. I need something just a little more lively here, Viv. I can't, mm. oh. so they, they'll they change it to rock or oh, something, okay. yeah. you know? <laughs> 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 Heavy metal that, you know, exactly. so that they can get yeah. their hearts pumping. Oh. But for me, I can spend an entire day just doing something, cleaning the house or whatever. And listening to jazz, and and I'm humming along with it. Yes. I'm maybe scatting a little bit in my head and and hone my scat skills, but I'm still running a vacuum cleaner or washing some dishes. It just has a very settling effect, I think, on you. I think you're right, Vivian. And you know, um, let's think about you on stage for a moment and. I always like to watch the performer, and I've never had a chance to ask a performer this question. Okay, okay. But when you are singing, are you singing to someone in the audience? Are you singing to someone that you love? Are you singing, when you start singing, are you just singing, or oftentimes, does do you have like a recipient for that song? There, there, sometimes it's just, there's pictures in my mind, um, especially something that's like really swinging and, and, and I'm feeling that, but a song like I've grown accustomed to his face. I look around the room when I'm singing it and it always is, is wonderful to see. I'll see an older couple say in their seventies or something. And they're sitting there and I watch them as I'm singing the song. And I can just see, first I see the memories on their face. And then you'll, I'll look and her hand will move and she'll start rubbing his hand. Oh. And his hand will move and he'll start, start playing with her hair. And I can see the memories and the years mm -hmm. just in that. And I, and I love that, love watching that. And then other songs, as I'm introducing the song, I start talking about the song. Um, my sweetie will come into my head. Oh, yeah. And in my, in my heart and in my head, I'm picturing him and that's where it's directed. And he may not be in the audience. Sometimes he is, I mean, he lives in Detroit and I live here in Sacramento. So a lot of times he's not here, but he's here in my heart and it's traveling across the miles. 
when I'm singing the song. Absolutely. And uh, so it just all depends. If my children are in the audience, I and 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 a song like um, uh, "Pure Imagination" or um, "Rainbow Connection," um, I tap into everyone who's in the room who has children. Yes. And my children are in my head because I'll I use I use family members. Uh, <laughs> when I'm doing songs, if I'm as I'm leading up to it, I will I will use my family members to to make a point to talk about this you know this song that's coming up. But I'm also tapping into memory of your or your three year old when they were young, when they were children, or if you have a three year old now. I want you to listen to the words because the lyrics are so important to me and how I put them out there and just the words themselves. I love lyrics. And so I want you to tap into those lyrics and think of your kiddo who's at home, you know, and they're going to wake up tomorrow morning and be just running circles around the living room <laughs> or for you to tap into your 40 year old and remember when they were five. Oh, that's so yeah. that's where all of the things come for me in, in the songs that I sing. Oh, that's wonderful. We're gonna take a little break and we will be back with Vivian Lee in just a minute to talk about her favorite jazz composers and lyricists. You're listening to Calm Unity Global Internet Radio. We're back with Vivian Lee on Community Global Internet Radio, observations and perspectives. And Vivian, we've given you a minute to think about who are your all-time favorite composers and lyricists in the jazz genre? There's, oh, there's so many, so many. I mean, of course, Gershwin, Cole Porter, you know, all, all of those people, Billie Holiday, wrote some songs. The mainstream jazz instrumentalists, um, I like their their stuff and I've actually either written lyrics to or or found lyrics to their songs. So it it it's it's all over the map because it's not as much the composer as it is the song that catches my attention. Something about the song catches my attention. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to do that. Right. You know, there's a there's a song, what is his name? Lee Wong, I think is his name. He wrote a song that I heard Nancy Wilson do, mm -hmm. listening to Sirius Radio on on my TV in the house. And I had to stop what I was doing and go and see what the song was. And it's called An Older Man is Like an Elegant Wine. Oh my. And I had never heard of this gentleman before. And uh, the song just caught me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love these lyrics. And I had to find a chart for it or have some chart for me. I don't remember. We have the chart to do that song. So it's all, it's a, it's the song itself that resonates with me that the lyrics and the melody so it, it's not so much a favorite one mm -hmm. as different songs that they that they do that they've come up with that I hear that catch my attention and then I go hunting for a chart mm. for it and learn it if I don't know it that, yeah that makes a lot of sense to look at the music, the lyrics. And you mentioned Cole Porter. My God, what a genius he was when it came oh my to gosh. lyrics. Yes. Oh, just fabulous. So at this point in our COVID development, um, 
our creative venues are pretty much closed down right now. And do you think that we're going to open soon? Do you think that, do you see anything coming that will be uh, having fewer people and more uh, spatial distance between us, like in any jazz clubs or places that we gather, event centers here? That's my hope. Um, it's still, it's still so iffy. I mean, we, I, I think we have a few months of getting more and more people vaccinated because yes. that was the really important thing for people to be vaccinated. There's going to be every other chair, every third chair yes. that will have someone sitting in it. I think we're, we're, until we really, really feel that this thing is kind of dampened down, I think that's gonna be the future through the summer. Mm -hmm. um, there are people that are, that are doing some things, some Zoom things. I have not done that. Um, we've all been very, very careful about being around each other because a few of us have family members that have, have some health issues. And so for me, for Zoom, we have to all be together because you know you can't be in different places and do this. It right. doesn't work. The <laughs> sync up just doesn't work. So we have not been together and, and I'm looking forward to it because I miss my guys. Yeah. Um, but I think as more and more people get vaccinated that we will eventually be able to have something that venues, those venues that have survived. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. You know, at this, um, um, and I think, and I think we, we, we're all finding some creative things that we're looking at doing. I, I've been working on that at here at my own house, thinking up creative uh, ways that I'm going to go forward once people feel comfortable. That's great. With doing things and, and yeah. Exactly. We're looking forward to this. So for Vivian Lee fans, both old and new, um, we can get your CDs. Um, where do we order C Vivian Lee CDs? So you can order my CDs. Uh, there's a couple of ways that you can do it. You can go to VivianLeeJazz.com, which is my website. And click on, what is it, uh, recordings, I think is what the, the menu is across the top. You click on recordings and from there, the CDs are there and you click on the CD it, and it will take you to my store. Perfect, perfect. So that, that's the easiest way to uh -huh. do it, just VivianLeeJazz.com. Perfect. And, um, Vivian, we want to remind your fans that we have from any- um, up. I, I didn't hear, I didn't hear okay. the question. Because we wanted to remind your fans that we have at least two and a half to three hours of Vivian Lee on Community Global Internet Radio. And so mm -hmm. for people who want to listen, and I'm getting comments from, actually, I got a comment the other night from Reno on your music, and I got a comment from, believe it or not, Paris. And we, oh have, we have a couple of people in France that listen and they were, um, they said, who is that woman? That, it's so calming. And um, I <laughs> had to explain that it was Vivian Lee. Well, do you have anything that you'd like to leave our listeners with as far as thoughts about jazz music, your own life, how things, you probably have been surprised that this has worked out. 37 and you suddenly realize that you can, actually have a career in music. I mean, that is a fabulous, fabulous thing, Vivian, to have that. It, 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 it's been, uh, it's been an amazing, uh, an amazing journey. It, it really has. And um, 
I've been, I've been blown away by it that um, in 1995, no one knew who I was. No one knew my name. I was doing little obscure things down in, in old sat. Uh, and then I, um, I'm pretty well known and uh, people enjoy what I do and I'm, I'm humbled by it because it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. I, I, my fans are not just my fans, especially the ones here in the Sacramento area, they've become friends. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, I don't know if you have been here, um, but I open up my space, my personal space once a year. Going forward, it'll probably be more than that um, at my home and do um, backyard concerts at my house um, every year. Um, it, it, it's been a dinner concert in the past, but now it's going to be, you know, just mainly concerts with hors d'oeuvres and stuff like that. So I, I've let them into my space because I'm, a, I, you know, even though I'm, I'm a performer and out there on the stage and that the persona that I am out there, when I step off the stage, I'm a, a little bit of a different person, yeah. me, but a little, you know, yeah. Yeah. um, I'm a little bit more private. I don't share um, a lot. I don't share things on social media. Mm -hmm. I keep my private life private. People know that I have children. They know that I have grandchildren and, and things like that because they've seen them at my shows. But I don't publicize my personal life. Yeah. And so it means something. to be able to ace to come to my home for a concert. Well, we thank you so much. I would like to personally thank you for the years of entertainment and enjoyment that you have created and actually conducted for friends and I in so many different venues in Sacramento. Thank you so much. Thank you for being thank with you. us today. Thank you for having me. It's yes. been an absolute pleasure. And we're looking forward to one of your backyard or outdoor gatherings. Keep September in mind. That's that's my target we'll, is to look at September. Will do. Thanks so much, Vivian. Thank you, Diane. Oh.